Coming up on show 794, a new Gigafactory will build EV batteries, and this time in Norway. And if you stick around, I'll give you more details. Plus on the show today, we have a look at Mercedes-Benz battery plants. Elon Musk getting a big payday, but how big? And how do you fast at ultra fast charging speeds? What do you need to do to the cables? We'll find out the answer to that on today's podcast. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily for Saturday 30th of May. My name is Martin Lee, going through every EV story so you don't have to. Well, thank you as always to myev.com for being behind me making this show. My EV in the US is a marketplace specifically about buying and selling and learning about EVs. And if it's got a plug socket, it's a dedicated EV marketplace. And you can see why millions of people are switching to electric at myev.com. Well, let's talk about this huge gigafactory building sustainable batteries in Norway. A Norwegian company called Moro Batteries is establishing a new gigafactory, which will be located in the Agda County. Their aim is to revolutionize battery production. And they say establish a more sustainable supply to European car makers, according to a Forbes article today. And it is all about battery supply because because many car makers can make the cars. The difficult bits is making them run without a supply of batteries. And so that really is crucial key to so many of the battery of the car makers plans over the next 5, 10, 15 years. Works are going to start next year with a total capacity of 32 gigawatt hours every single year. Doesn't mean they're going to make that from year one, but that will be the capacity and the factory is going to consist of four equal modules of eight gigawatt hours apiece. And they're going to make it in sections. The first section is planned to be ready in 2024 and will use existing battery technology, while the other sections will be developing the next generation of battery cell technology. Their lithium sulfur batteries are going to be using uh, deposed materials from the Norwegian oil industry. Uh, the production will differentiate from today's usual supply chain, which uh, which requires uh, rare minerals and 90%, 97% of which takes place on coal-fueled plants in places like China, Japan and South Korea. Norway, of course, have a nice amount of renewable energy on the grid and... Lots of love for EVs in the country, but that's love for buying them. But what about actually making the batteries that go inside them? They didn't have the expertise to do that, but they do seem to, and so we'll follow that story. Brilliant news. Moving on to another battery story today. And Mercedes-Benz has put the foundation under its electrification offensive with the investment of 1 billion euros, 1.1 billion dollars. In a total of nine battery facilities and plants, that's spread over seven locations on three continents. A new video hitting YouTube tells us more details. The first and the main site for Mercedes-Benz batteries is in Kementz. It's near Dresden in Germany, where the company has two plants operated by their... It's a wholly owned subsidiary. They're called Deutsche Accumotive, and it's been going since 2012, and the new, bigger facility since 2018. According to Inside EVs, the cumulative production of pure electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids, and yes, hybrid vehicles as well, uh, has exceeded 500,000 already. And the new plant in Commence, when it's ready, will produce 500,000 battery packs annually, not splitting it out into the gigawatt hour like the previous story did, but half a million battery packs produced annually, uh, some of them for conventional soft hybrid hybrids, things like EQ Boost technology, Mercedes-Benz call it, but most of them, I would say, would go to the EQ Power. So things like plug-in hybrids and the all-new electrics like the EQC. Well, the manufacturing lines in Dresden, in Commence, are highly automated. Uh, very amazing, they say. But the plant will employ people. Very important that 1,300 people will be employed in this plant. They say that producing a highly complex lithium-ion battery does require multiple production lines. Each line is 170 metres long, each with more than 30 production stations, with a high number of production steps. Absolute precision is necessary, they say, to manufacture a battery system that consists of 384 individual battery cells, plus all the other components, and the thermal management and the BMS and things like that. Well, the battery cells are welded with a laser and with a 
tiny, tiny tolerance. It has to be so perfect using modern automation technology. And as, men, as good as the robots are, still needing lots of people to do that. So an insight into the money that Mercedes-Benz is spending and the reasons why they're doing it and how many batteries they'll be making every year from that one facility. Someone else is getting a big payday, and that would be Elon Musk. I told you about this story a couple of weeks ago. We thought he'd hit the targets to get a tranche of money. Uh, he famously doesn't take a salary from Tesla. Uh, I'm sure there are other things, other perks of the job, uh, which go along with it. As many top CEO talent, I remember Steve Jobs always took a dollar, didn't he? Uh, but he did have a private jet paid for by Apple. Anyway, back to Elon. In a regulatory filing two days ago, Elon has earned the first portion of a performance-based stock option package that ties his pay to Tesla's valuation, says the street.com. Well, Elon was granted 1 million 688,670 stock options. He's not just given the stock, by the way. They are options to buy them at a certain price. Now, the stock is worth a lot more than this, but the price he can pay is $350, according to the filing, if he were to exercise that as of today. Under the terms, if he were to then sell that stock immediately the next minute, it would net him $780 million dollars in profit. And that's based on a closing price of $805 as of Thursday's closing. Well, the award was contingent upon Tesla reaching and maintaining a market cap of $100 billion, which they did. For the remaining milestones, the market capitalization must grow in $50 billion increments. And ultimately, if it reaches $650 billion, Elon will be the richest person on the planet, although he might not be on the planet because he's heading to Mars as soon as he possibly can. Uh, again, none of this means he's been given $780 million. It means he's got the option to buy the stock, and of course, if the stock price goes down, then the money he makes goes down, and of course, that also means he needs the money to buy those stocks. Some people saying that there is no, it's, it's no coincidence uh, that he recently put many of his houses up for sale to generate some cash flow. Let's talk about Tesla speeding up production and installation of the third iteration of their supercharging technology. He did confirm on Twitter that the slower deployment of superchargers is because of production, but now they're going to begin ramping up. And Elon wants the supercharging network to cover 95% to 100% of population in active Tesla markets, says Fred Electric. Well, last year, Tesla finally launched Supercharger V3, top rate of 250 kilowatts on that. But it didn't enable the anticipated acceleration of supercharger deployment. If you thought that all of a sudden every supercharging station was going to be upgraded or even lots of new ones with V3 superchargers, didn't happen. In fact, Tesla is still building new stations with V2 technology uh, to this day. Elon now confirmed on Twitter uh, that they will be ramping up V3 superchargers and they will speed up that rollout. According to the website supercharge.info, they have 93 stations in the US under construction and over 120 in permitting at an average of 8.8 .8 superchargers per station. That would be 2,000 new Tesla superchargers. And of that 2,000, we hope that a good chunk of those would be V3s. Of course... When you think about V3 superchargers and you think about how many Model 3s are out there, how many Model Ys this year are going to be out there by the time we get to holiday season at the end of the year, it really is essential because those queues are becoming increasingly common at busy times. Even seen Tesla shipping out mobile charging stations to try and help with the really busy charging stations. And of course, the problem only gets worse unless they deal with it. And so it's not the fact they're going to build more, but... With V3 supercharging and 250 kilowatts maximum, well, peak charge rate doesn't charge for that long at 250. But the point is, it increases the throughput and you can stop off 10, 15 minutes and it's enough to get you on the way again. And the next person can wheel in right behind you and get charging. Let's stay with charging, actually. This is interesting. Uh, the product safety watchdog UL has just certified a wireless EV power transfer system uh, made by Lumen group. Uh, the wireless power transfer system uses inductive charging, inductive magnetic 
coupling. And that works by uh, using a ground-mounted transmitting pad and a vehicle-mounted receiving pad. And of course, you can charge with no wires with this wireless charging technology, no physical contact between the vehicle and the charger. And it's really efficient, almost as efficient, in some cases more so than plugging in with the cable, which kind of blows my mind. How can, and it's just through the air. Surely it's less efficient, but it's not. Uh, according to the website Charge DVs, Lumen Group worked with UL's engineers and lab technicians to test the safety and performance of their wireless charging equipment. It includes things like the power source, the ground pad, and the vehicle assembly. And it's hugely important because as people, you know, rightly say, we're dealing with very high power situations here. And so we don't want any kind of safety issue, but Rest assured, when it comes to EVs, safety is the number one priority. Okay, moving on. How do you charge really, really quickly? No, quicker than that, really, really, really quickly. Well, if you want to get lots of power down a cable, you need some clever thinking around it. Huber and Sooner, the global supplier of electrical uh, connectivity solutions, has launched a new high-powered charger, the HPC 500. It's a new addition to the high power charging portfolio. And they say it's the world's first cooled charging cable system that allows a continuous charge rate of 500 amps, which is mega. Even in very high temperature environments, according to ngtnews.com, uh, the HPC 500 cable and the connector builds on their previous 400 amp technology, the HPC 400 family, as well as extensive field experience and continuous innovation in cooled cable solutions and EV charging stations. Well, several improvements and new features make the system ready for existing and future requirements. Well, these enhancements include the 500 amp charging, the weather protection, the IP67 connector protection, uh, the use of metering and replaceable contacts. You can actually service the things and make sure they last a really long time as well. There's a new 24 volt cooling unit to increase capacity. Cooling capacity is all about getting those temperatures down, particularly on the cooled cable system. If you want continuous 500 amps running through a cable, in some places the temperatures in hot environments, 50 degrees C, for instance, ambient temperature, you got to get the cables cooled down. Now, they do that by pre-filling them with coolant, and it fits into existing charging stations they make, significantly reducing the installation time of doing those upgrades. Well, the speed of both the, uh, the ventilators on the heat exchanger they use and the coolant pump is all automatically adjusted to achieve the right operating levels. And, of course, keep the noise down as well, because what you don't want is a bunch of high-powered chargers that make a right old racket. Moving on. And seven companies in Japan have joined forces to establish the new consortium, the E5 consortium, and that's going to create a zero-emission electric vehicle and vessel. This is the first phase of a project, and the seven partners plan to launch the world's first ever zero emissions vessel. Now, I mentioned this a little while ago when the first the story first broke, and the irony wasn't lost on me. It's an all-electric, zero emission, all-electric oil tanker, but it's completely powered by lithium-ion batteries. And these seven companies in Japan, part of the new consortium, the E5 consortium, say it will be ready to move oil around by electric power. In 2022, the five values the consortium have are electrification, environment, evolution, efficiency, and economics. And they say they're going to promote sustainable growth of coastal shipping in Japan. According to Electric Hybrid Marine Technology website, Japan is suffering from a really aging maritime workforce and aging vessels as well. And the shipping industry desperately needs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And this is one way they're going to do it. Final story today, and after roughly five years of existence, an electric car sharing company, Blue Indy, has called it a day in Indianapolis after about 3,000 members joined the scheme. It wasn't enough to be a successful proposition. The program started in September 2015, but unfortunately has had to shutter their operations, says Autoblog. And now they did complete 180,000 electric rides in the cars, but still not enough demand. And so they are closing the service. But what happens to the cars, the chargers? Even the parking for those cars. Well, at least there's a plan for some things. There's around 30 or 40 vehicles with body damage that is going to have to go to the scrapyard for recycling. But 
the things they will use again, things like the batteries and the powertrains of those vehicles, will all be taken out and used again, repurposed and finding a second life. Furthermore, there are cars that weren't damaged in the fleet, and so they're going to be used immediately in Los Angeles for the Blue LA ride-sharing program. And that's good news as well. And it's also more further, it's further proof that when EVs come to the end of their life, and it's very sad that this was a short life and it was a business that couldn't quite find a business model that worked with electric uh, ride sharing, that the, the expensive bits of the cars, the batteries, most certainly will be reused and recycled. They are not going to landfill, despite what critics want you to believe. Okay, let's move on. And question of the week this week, which I'll read out at the end of tomorrow's show. What are your desired specs for any electric pickup truck? There's many of them on the market and coming soon. But what do you want to see from EV pickup trucks? Well, I'd love to know from you. Uh, you can let me know by email, hello at evnewsdaily.com or on the YouTube comments. Well, thank you to everyone that's listened to any one of the 793 previous shows. Uh, next week, we will rock round to 800 shows of this podcast which is slightly crazy isn't it uh, that's amazing whether you've been whether this is your first podcast or whether you've been here for more than just one show uh, the archive is online on my little blog at evnewsdaily.com uh, the search function on that means that if you want to find a story or research something uh, about any of the previous 800 shows uh, then you're more than welcome to and that is online thanks to Patreon. Well, Patreon is a website where people can support creators, and I really couldn't pay for all of that hosting and all the streaming and all the things that come along with this. It's not the cheapest thing to do to serve thousands and thousands of people every day with a 20-minute audio file, but Patreon makes it happen. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. If you'd like your name added the list of Patreon uh, supporters on Sunday's show, but I always give a mention for my premium partners and a new one to mention as of next month. Uh, premium partner Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Brightsmith Group for Clean Tech Talent, Porsche of The Village Cincinnati, and Audi of Cincinnati East. If you could leave a little review on Apple Podcasts anytime, uh, they've got like a star rating system and please feel free to do that. But if you get a chance on the computer app, it's under reviews and ratings on the, the phone or tablet app. Uh, you can very easily just say a few words. I know you're busy, no worry if not, but if you do get a chance to do that, it really does help spread the word and grow this show. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>